Hello and welcome to the YouTube podcast series of Cities ABC and Open Business Council. I'm Hilton Super, the Vice Chairman of Student Group, and today I have the pleasure of speaking to Alexander Storachuk and Alexandra Nigmatulin, who are both co-founders of PRnews.io. This is where we interview people that are changing the world, people that are inspiring us with their achievements and creativity and acumen with the use of technology. Now, in previous interviews, we have interviewed over 300 amazing people and achieved more than 15 million views on YouTube. This interview series on Cities ABC is in partnership with our platforms, openbusinesscouncil.org, a Web3 technology platform that employs the use of truth and trust through unique corporate digital identity using blockchain and the deployment of data analytics, AI, and machine learning. So today, I'd like to introduce you to Alex and Alex. So tell us, gentlemen, where are you? Uh, hi, hello. Uh, we are based in Estonia and Tallinn. We are online entrepreneurs of Ukrainian region with over 20 years of experience in news technology and digital PR communications. I've been living in Estonia for, for the last four years uh, to gain experience from unicorn companies' founders. And I joined PR, PR News in Estonia two years ago, uh, but before I walked from Ukraine. Brilliant. So welcome, gentlemen. So Alexander, you highly skilled professional in the media and business sectors. You are uh, the official member of the four business councils since 2021, and you have made substantial contributions and leadership positions in the field of PR, marketing, digital marketing. And you also you're this co-founder and board member of PRnews.io. So tell us a little bit about how you got here. My entrepreneur journey started 18 years ago when I created my first project. The reason was my student part-time job of news knowledge as a film. In the role of content editor, I was responsible for writing a news extract algorithm for news three syndication system. And at the moment, it hit me if there are uh, some systems for collecting information for syndication use, there must be a system for distribution. And then I discovered such services like Business Wire, PR News Wire, PR Web, but uh, they are oriented toward uh, the new disclosure market. My project was focused on distributing press releases from startup companies in uh, East Europe. And Alex? I joined uh, to do the company later. I just want maybe, I think that maybe it's, uh, Alexander will be the main focus of the interview. I'll just maybe pick up some, some sometimes just, just to help him. No problem. No okay. problem. So Always maybe, that yeah. That's okay. So tell us a little bit about what is unique and different about prnews.io. Uh, PR News is a PR tech company that uh, meets the growing demand from small and mid-sized businesses for extensive media coverage. This is like Amazon for paid media. So you just choose the user website, put it in the cart, and proceed to check out. To processing audience data from uh, over the 100,000 news sites, uh, we simplify the process of distributing sponsored content through various media channels. They're helping businesses enhance their online visibility in the media coverage. Exactly, I understand that. So, I mean, when people talk about PR, all they think about is public relations. They think about a PR news release. But PR news IO does a lot more than that. Yes, uh, PR news is not only a single solution for PR specs. Uh, we also help them not to just publish media, but to find the perfect media for their purposes. Because as Alex told, uh, we accumulate data from different news websites. We can tell you exactly where you have to be published to be popular. And we are dealing with this paid media uh, when we are talking about PR. And uh, we are now focused on uh, digital media. And with our instrument, you can not only choose the right media, you can control where it will be published, uh, how it will be published, and how it is performs. So in terms of the, the content marketplace for sponsored content, they are very 
you know, fixed price publications to, in terms of the way you get access to the marketplace. Can you tell us a little bit about the way in which the fixed prices for publications play in the role in your approach at PRnews.io? Yeah, the fixed prices approach ensures transparency and predictability for businesses, making it easier for businesses to plan their PR and market budget. And PR news fixed prices eliminate uh, the negotiation process and allow companies to secure media placement streamline the process instantly. And in terms of producing the content for the distribution, do you rely on the companies who produce that content or do you produce and 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 co-write or co-produce the content that goes out into the, the, digital, the digital domain? There are like five approaches uh, how the content we distribute can be produced. And the first and the main approach is when companies provide their content. Sometimes it's press releases, sometimes it's articles, sometimes it's even interviews. The second approach, they can ask for the copywriting services from our side and PR News can help with that. With that. Then sometimes PR companies or publications can create content for our customers. So, for example, you can ask for copywriting services from Forbes and they will prepare an article for you. Uh, the fourth approach, as, the newly, as our new thing, is AI copywriter. You can just type the prompt in PR News and it will produce a good piece of content. You can use it or you can use it as an inspiration for a future content. And the fifth approach is you can find a nice piece on, of content already online on some website and you can also add something from you. Uh, maybe there is a list of efficient companies from some niche, and you want to be listed in this thing too. And you don't need to produce your own content. You just want to be mentioned in the exact piece of content and to update it. Mm -hmm. So there are five approaches. That's very interesting in terms of the the use of technology, I think is, is, is really, really taking you forward into providing for your clients a, a, a very interesting way of reaching their their target audience. But tell me a little bit about, yes, you could produce the content, but once you've produced that content and you target that content at a particular demographic, et cetera, or country or ge geography, how do you amplify that across the other social media platforms and which ones do you like working with? Now we are more focused on digital media. We don't do placements in social media platforms, but some of the publications we work with, they also offer services of distributing the news on their own digital channels. For example, you can buy an article on some business website, and then uh, this publication can share it in their own LinkedIn group and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So you don't use the platforms like yeah the classics, the Facebooks, the X or Instagram to amplify any of the content that is produced for your customers? Not yet. Not yet. We are focused on paid content and there is uh, enough to cover right now with the uh, old-fashioned digital media, but and there are some other restrictions and problems. Um, talking about when you talk with some influencers that sometimes they mm, are not so reliable as media. That's why mm -hmm. it's harder to uh, connect them. But we are working on that. It's uh, one of the things we are going to introduce next, next year. We want to give an opportunity to our customers to publish content not only on digital media, but also on Instagram, in YouTube, and uh, maybe be mentioned in podcasts and something like that. Exactly. I mean, the main objective here is obviously to reach potential customers. But at the end of the day, what you want them to do is to engage. How yeah. do you ensure some levels of engagement if you're not using social media? Yeah. We like cover the simple solution. We help you with paid media, but we always looking for new opportunities for our customers. And we also always try to produce something new. Now the amplification and distribution of the published articles are 
uh, done by the customers or in some cases by publications. But we will do something with that and offer them the distribution with the social media too. Exactly. Okay. Now you've got over 30,000 customers in 25 countries that you've garnered since 2005. Can you share with us a few stories or examples of PR news? Io has helped business establish their online presence. Yeah, sure. We do have a lot of examples across industries and different gear. For example, Vivo, a Singapore travel booking platform, has doubled its traffic within a six-month period since content marketing and partnership with PR News. Uh, the case uh, reminds that it is completely feasible for smaller companies or those with limited resources to build their brand uh, or grow their audience uh, through content marketing. As the, another example, we have a client, Smiley, it's the largest email marketing service in the Baltic states. <clears throat> they are well established in Estonia, where the, uh, most media and online shops use their solution. They saw the potential to grow in their different regions. And uh, that's when they turned to Pair News uh, to help them develop a strategy to increase brand awareness in neighboring countries, Lithuania and uh, Latvia. Maybe another example is yeah. online. Uh, another example is online retailer Notino. It's they based in Czech Republic, but they sell their things in twenty plus European countries, and it's different twenty different languages. And without peer news, it will be hard for them to achieve that goal. So they use PR News as their provider of content uh, in various countries. And of course, in different languages, is that correct? Yeah, 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 yeah. And how does that technology work in terms of converting the content from original language to different languages? We have a team of, maybe in the case of Notino, they already prepare the texts, but we also have a team of uh, native uh, speakers who can create the content and there is always a two-step approach in creating the content. One native speaker creates the content, another native speaker proofreads it. That's why we knew that uh, know that uh, the content is definitely good for the target audience in the target uh, language. I mean, with the user... also... Sorry, go ahead. So, sorry, sorry. But we also use some technology solution from a German-based company, the people. So to translate uh, content, uh, yeah. yeah. So I mean, we use a AI a lot in some cases. Sometimes uh, mm, just to give an impression for publication before they publish articles, they need to understand what it is about, and then we can use this deep approach, it's AI solution to create content. That's fantastic. You're now embracing the technologies that we have today in order to, to basically amplify the content in different languages. So in terms of your audience growth and your customers, what other strategies do you employ to help your clients effectively reach their target audience? Uh, we have uh, three basic strategies that help to achieve uh, the goals of a brand awareness, a link environment for better Google search results and getting traffic to the website. So we empower our customers to filter media outlets that are tailored to this specific target audience, domain quality, etc. And this strategic approach ensures that brands can effectively reach their desired demographic. And by helping select the most relevant media outlets with predictable terms, peer news ensure that their content resonates with the right people. Mm -hmm. So at first we ask our customers what they want to achieve, and then we manually pick up the best publications for them and tell them what they have to publish and uh, according to the target they want to approach. Sometimes it's uh, brand awareness when they want to be covered in the um, as many media outlets as they want. And sometimes they just use it uh, to get uh, um, pick up, picked up by search engines and that's another approach and like third approach sometimes they just want to sell something and in this case we can publish their articles 
on some publications and also uh, give an opportunity to target the readers of this publication on social media. For example, you create now some piece of content describing best solutions for uh, Thanksgiving in the US, and then <clears throat> you can approach people who read the article in the publication, you can approach them on Facebook and help them to buy your product. And in terms of engagement with the potential customers, there's obviously there's the approach which is very product led based on the, the goods and services of the the the, the your, your your client trying to actually grow their business. But you talk about producing content, articles, and things like that. But that normally comes from a person. How much time are you spending working on building the um, the thought leadership of the specialists within the company who are essentially driving the growth and development of the company and its sales? You mean our company? Yes. Yeah, so, for example, thought leadership. So you, you'll take the CEO or the head of business development who is a specialist in, or, or she's a specialist in a particular area for that particular product. And in order to build the story and the narrative around that product or service, it's important that the individual is highlighted rather than the product because they are become the authoritative author of the benefits of those particular products. So thought leadership, which means, you know, and I don't want to use the word influence because that influences those are just sort of a, a not another version of that, but officially thought leadership are people that are driving the narrative of trust in the particular product or service that they are producing based on their industry knowledge. Yeah, that's completely correct. And our instrument help with building the personal brand of the founders because people like to buy from people. And in case with the <clears throat> B2C, B2B marketing, people prefer to, to, to see their seller as a professional and trust them. That's why uh, people actually need articles in media, because the media, the trustability of media, it somehow transforms into trustability of the car of the people who are mentioned in that media. That's why uh, every businessman want to be published in Forbes, because it's just uh, approves that uh, he's he's a leader and a trustable person. Mm -hmm. And uh, with that, we also have a lot of solutions. That's why we have this interview format when you can tell about your company and publish uh, an article in the format of interview about the um, um, yeah, things that are important for your company and why people have to trust you. And it is also important to buy from the experts when you want to buy something not cheap. For example, if you want to buy real estate, uh, these people are involved in in personal brand awareness a lot. Absolutely. So, you know, personal brand, I think, is really, really important, which is it ties in with my, my comment on thought leadership. The key thing is you can get something published in Forbes. Um, but how does the how do you amplify that article across different media platforms and what tools do you use in order to amplify the Forbes article? It's a very nice question because last, last uh, this last week we were in Miami in in the street. I saw this billboard with an interview with some guy on Forbes with the QR code, and people promote their articles in media in online media with like physical objects with real objects on the streets. In, yeah, on the street. Yeah, <laughs> and another approach is what we offer to our customers. We can help you to uh, build the campaign on Facebook or some native advertising platforms like Nativo, so you can bring readers to to your article. Because actually, it, it will not distribute itself. You need to bring readers and give them nice signals for for search engines and to publish that. 
And in, also in that case, sometimes you can help this uh, article be mentioned by quoting this article in other publications. And we also can help with that. For example, you have a nice piece of content of Forbes, and but it can be quoted on some type two or three kind of media. Um, so it will bring more um, trustability to the Forbes article. I mean, one of the real challenges, and correct me if I'm wrong, is that you may have a fantastic article on Forbes. You may find distrib- dif- different distribution channels on other digital platforms. But as you mentioned before, you haven't really engaged in the amplification through social media, say, for example, X, say, for yeah. example, LinkedIn, say, for example, you mentioned Facebook. Um, but a lot of this is paid media, and, and a lot of this can be done without what you call paid media. It just requires somebody to actually go and retweet or, or republish or comment or engage. You need the audience to engage with those articles because that's when the search engines and the actual me- digital media platforms themselves the algorithms tend to reamplify that trend or that trending article or that trending story or those trending hashtags um so how much do you rely on that in terms of the the amplification of these articles now we just give advices to our customers we help them as a told uh, we help them to create their campaign on social media so just to to bring some spend uh, some money on advertising of the article you have already published and um, also people say that you have to spend 10 times more on the amplification on bringing readers to the article uh, if that's why it's it's really important and another thing i wanted to mention is that you don't need to do it like once, because you can be really effective. You can have a nice piece of content in a nice publication. But that day, Apple introduced their new iPhone. And your story will go nowhere, because everyone is writing about, about iPhone. And it can happen some nice in the world or some terrible in the world. That's why your news can be um, come unmentioned. That's why you have, if you want to build your brand, you need to do it all the time. And when uh, startup uh, founders come to us and ask when they have to invest in PR, we tell them that they have invested before, like yesterday, before they started the startup. Because PR is something you have to build from the day one or day zero. Because uh, if you will be, sometimes if you will be, lucky and your startup will grow if you not invest in pr uh, your competitors can invest in black pr and that's why you have to um, have a good foundation for your following pr activities so what please go ahead at least uh, you have to google your brand name or your personal name (laughs) because uh, it's it's really strange that people don't understand that it's so necessary to try to Google yourself. Absolutely. And, yeah, and control what, what is happening there. Mm-hmm. Is there a nice article? Is there an interview with you? Is there a LinkedIn profile in the search engine results page? <clears throat> Everything has to be there. You have to create, from day one, you have to create your profile on Google Business, you have to create your profiles on social media so no one will uh, do it uh, for you and then try to sell their profiles to you. Absolutely. So in your case, what you're saying is up to the individual that's being brought into your, your uh, as clients for them to do a significant amount of their own engagement in the digital space in order to amplify their brand. Yeah, yeah, it's completely right. Uh, they have to do the big amount of job because they also have to use it in their uh, PR and marketing activities and sales activities. For example, if you have a nice use on some publication, you have to share it with your sales team so they can use it in their sales pitches uh, because people people trust media. 
uh, even it is uh, like in our case, if it is marked as paid uh, article, they still trust media, they still trust editorials. That's why you need to use it in any any step you in, in your marketing and sales funnel. So what challenges does PR News IO address for PR specialists and how does your all-in-one solution simplify the process of distributing information about companies, company events, brands, etc. PR specialists uh, often face difficulties uh, when it comes uh, to finding a new channels for UK messages, uh, establishing a relationship with them and getting the material actually published. Uh, this uh, can be challenging, especially when the company uh, newsfeed to be uh, need to be distributed in immediately. Yeah, you know, so and uh, you have the time to build a relationship. So that is why Sky News operates in a paradigm of paid media, and that uh, must be handled on a par with the uh, own media and uh, simplify these processes, make it an easier and a more cost-effective solution for a PR professional looking for to promote events or product launches or important announcement. So tell us a little bit about the considering the very rapidly evolving digital media landscape. You know, we're going from a web two space to the web three space. How are you able to stay adaptable to these emerging trends and their technologies in order to provide an effective solution to your clients? I would highlight a few key points. Firstly, it is a constant market research. Uh, we actively follow the latest trends in digital marketing and PR communications. Uh, this includes monitoring search engines' roles and algorithms, uh, the emergence of uh, new platforms, changes in social media algorithms, and uh, the evolution of uh, uh, consumer behavior. Uh, Alex, maybe uh, you're going to update. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, second thing, I think that uh, we are always uh, on top of tech approach and we use new technology like AI. It, uh, we, don't, we don't trust AI everything, but we understand that it is a nice helper if you want to create something new. So this year we introduced our AI text uh, creator and editor where you can just put a prompt and it will create a press release on any newsworthy event you have in your company. And next year, we want to introduce AI helper to create your campaign in media. You just type the name of your website or your company name and the target audience, and we'll tell you where exactly it has to be promoted to achieve the results. We'll analyze what your competitors do, and we'll try to uh, do the same strategy and same approach for, your, for you. And with AI, the results will take like not hours or days like it, it take now. It will take seconds and your PR campaign will be prepared in seconds. All you have to do is to <laughs> add your card and, and go. That's very exciting because AI is really driving, um, <clears throat> driving forward adoption in, in communication. And adoption in communication in terms of producing content and producing articles, producing um, plans for just for content for for distribution, etc., cetera, etc., cetera. and utilizing that uh, using generative AI models, I think, is really, really, really interesting evolution and, and development. But I just want to throw in something else yeah. with the advent of Web three. Essentially, you can take a thought leader. And you could effectively create an avatar of that person and run a generative AI model under some form of control that actually can represent that individual or that product or that service. And then you let it, you know, you, you rely on that as a customer service agent or as a promotional agent or business development agent in order to grow your business. Are you seeing any developments in that area? Yes, yes, but uh, uh, we are like in the balance of human and AI approach because PR is like a 
delicate area and people don't like to share their they want that their mm, their PR campaigns were prepared mm, with oh, with like I don't know manually mm -hmm. <laughs> and in this case AI can be only the helper and but we always like another why why we how we develop we always listen to our customers and what they want they give a lot of beautiful ideas actually uh, everything we have on PR news it was somehow it was um, offered by our customers they wanted more information about the publications they wanted uh, to see the um, transparent prices and all it happened with the help of our customers with the help of experts with our collaboration with them we always try to visit all the events we can uh, doing it like every month and going in various parts of different of our world in different countries because sometimes sometimes some tech uh, tech things are introduced better in some countries you will never expect I mean, what's quite interesting about PR is very always you know, telling a positive story. Um, have you do you work with clients that um, effectively building a backup strategy for negative PR on them, and therefore a defensive strategy? Yeah, yeah, actually, yes. It's one of the like I don't know, one on one in PR. You have to first to create the. Um, basis for your PR approach because if it is not created by you sometime in sometimes in future it can happen that someone will create your story and it will, it will not be nice that's why uh, now you have to uh, put uh, your news uh, news about your company news about your founders everywhere you you can and also use this smart approach not putting uh, some good news but also try to answer some, I don't know, the real truth about company. And you have to have an article about that because people like to Google that, not the, the <clears throat> about the backstory of the company. And you yeah. have to, to prepare articles about that too. So crisis management is included in the service that you provide to your clients? It, Simple, in simple words, we just help companies be published in media. And there are various approaches people use that. Sometimes mm -hmm. they can create a story uh, about their company. Sometimes they want to create a story and to create demand they don't have already if they want to introduce something really new. Or sometimes they just want to change the narratives of consuming some kind of products. And it can be done with articles in media. So looking ahead in terms of vision of prnews.io, what other services are you going to be bringing to the platform to assist clients to navigate the ever-changing dynamics of digital online visibility and media coverage? Uh, we improve services to provide customers with their best technical solutions. In other words, we are talking about technical improvements to the platform. We are <clears throat> continuously improving the website by integrating innovations in the fields of AI and machine learning and processing the big data. So we process a lot of uh, uh, audience data about news websites for predictable uh, communications. Uh, uh, so we, we are expanding our network of media partners and we are focused on uh, news websites uh, ranging from hyper local news media to the world's uh, largest media. Uh, this will provide our clients with a greater visibility and access to a diverse audience. And uh, we focus on uh, data as well as analytics and monitoring news. We also introduce new products, like I told before, we want to introduce next year the influencers and new formats, like mentions in, uh, I don't know, in WhatsApp groups and uh, new new media we have right now, maybe in podcasts and etc. 
And recently we introduced our first B2C product. It is a gift card you can give give to your friend. Alex will show it. And it also was <laughs> picked up by our, uh, it was also like an idea from our customers. One of the customers come to us and they said that they want to give a gift to their founder of their company and uh, give him an interview in some Taiwan media. And we understood that sometimes people can give um, an article in media as a gift. That's very, very interesting. Right. Can you expand a little bit on that? Because I think that's a very interesting strategy. Yeah. So and it will be easier to promote this kind of service. For example, if you are an influencer in Instagram, you can just give, have giveaways of these things. Uh, just uh, uh, you can provide PR as a gift, actually. It's... PR as a gift. That's yeah. a new term I like. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It has to be in your checklist for uh, uh, Christmas uh, Christmas gifts. Absolutely. Good timing. <laughs> yeah. Fantastic timing. Yeah. And another thing uh, our customers uh, usually ask about is articles in printed media. In a lot of countries, printed media are still important and people read them. And they want something they have to, they can uh, to have in their hands. And then it will be like solid piece of news of article, piece of PR in your hands. And we will also introduce these uh, promotions in printed media too next year. Very interesting. So the, we've spent some time together and you've explained a lot about PRnews.io, what you do, how you do it, and where you're going has been very, very educational. And thank you very much indeed for your time. But if anybody who's watching this podcast would like to get in touch with you, what's the best way they can do that? They can come to our website. It's really simple. They can use it themselves or they can ask for help our representative. It's now it's live person. It's not an AI bot. <laughs> You will start speaking with the live person from the beginning. and uh, Or you can uh, send a letter to support at prnews.io. We'll be happy. And also, we are happy to be friends on LinkedIn. So find us and connect. Alex and Alex, it's been a wonderful, wonderful interview. Thank you very much indeed for your time and goodbye.